deadly are Gambit's cards? Who needs fancy weapons like throwing stars or even bullets when every single thing you touch and throw has the potential to become a bomb? That's the mutant power of Gambit, who soon to be the bomb of choice is the basic playing card. But just how dangerous would an exploding ace be? And can we make these even more impactful with science? <laughs> card hands. Remy LeBeau, or Gambit's famous power, is based on the principle of energy manipulation. Canonically, the character can activate the potential energy of an object and turn it into kinetic energy. The objects he touches don't move any faster, though. Instead, his powers charge up objects so that their potential energy is released as the kinetic energy of exploding pieces of those objects later. The playing cards that Gambit typically charges are supposed to be as energetic as hand grenades. So let's do some mutant math to find out just how dangerous they could be. If Gambit and his powers are messing around with potential energy, we should define that first. Very basically speaking, potential energy is the energy bound up in some object based on the internal stresses inside of that object, the object's position in electromagnetic or gravitational fields, the object's electric charge. Basically, if anything is applying a force to the object in question, it can have potential energy. For example, if I compress this spring in between my hands, internal stresses will build up inside of the spring based on its atomic structure. If I act to resist the forces pushing back out, now the spring has built up internal elastic potential energy. I don't think that Remy's cards, though, will have any elastic potential energy, or at least not very much, because playing cards are very easy to bend. Outside of being inside a large electromagnetic field, the two largest sources of potential energy inside of Gambit's cards are going to be gravitational and chemical. As we said, any object residing within a field of force can have some potential energy, and that's what we all have right now existing within Earth's gravitational field. On our pale blue dot, the force of gravity always acts to pull us towards the center of gravity of our planet. And as you can test by just jumping right now, it takes some force to move our mass away from the center of gravity of our planet, and therefore, any object suspended above the center of gravity of Earth, like compressing a spring and not letting it uncompress will have some built up gravitational potential energy. And because we are almost always considering Earth in these equations and existing on the surface of Earth in these equations, we can simplify the gravitational potential energy equation just a bit. It's equivalent to the mass of an object multiplied by the gravitational field of the planet that you are on, multiplied by the height that object is above the surface of a planet like Earth. So if Gambit is throwing a playing card at any height above the surface of our planet, then he will always at least have some potential energy to work with. Take that, Tatum! The other much larger source of potential energy that Gambit would have to work with is chemical potential energy. So based on the arrangement of atoms and molecules inside of a chemical, potential energy can be released from the bonds of that chemical, for example, heat and light, if it undergoes some kind of chemical reaction. For a structure like paper, the stuff that Gambit's cards are made out of, what we would be concerned with then is the specific energy of that paper. How much useful energy we can extract extract per unit mass if we make it undergo some kind of reaction. For example, if you use a fuse to start things off, you can get over 4 million joules per kilogram from the chemical trinitrotoluene, or TNT. But starting a chemical reaction doesn't always need something like a fuse, just a little bit of energy and maybe a little bit of oxygen. The first chemical reaction that humans ever truly harnessed was probably just rubbing two sticks together, supplying energy in the presence of oxygen to get fire from wood. So what if Gambit's powers kind of worked like that? They were able to supply whatever energy was necessary to kick off the chemical reaction and release the chemical potential energy of the material, the paper, that was in his cards. Then, these could do some damage. My leg! Calm down, Logan, it will grow back. Oh, you blew the whole thing off! If Gambit's powers could do whatever was necessary to release and harness potential energy, then Gambit could get a surprising punch out of just a playing card. I got some 
If Mon Ami here is using a standard deck of playing cards, then the chemical energy he will be getting is from the specific chemical energy of the paper those cards are printed on, and they will get a little potential boost from whatever height, gravitationally speaking, he is flinging those cards from. So then the total potential energy that Gambit will get, given our assumptions from the standard playing card, will be the gravitational potential energy plus the mass of a typical playing card multiplied by the specific chemical energy of paper. And paper, if it could react as violently as TNT does, thanks to Gambit's powers, actually has a much higher specific chemical energy than TNT. Using the specific energy of paper and the mass of a typical playing card, you find that Gambit's cards might explode with up to 36 thousand joules of energy. Now, canonically, Gambit's cards explode with the energy of hand grenades, and this is 25 times less energetic than that. But still, potentially, <laughs> very dangerous. This is more energy than the kinetic energy of just about any projectile fired from any firearm that you can own. So, assuming perfect energy transfer, these cards could definitely still do some Damage! But could we do better? What if we made these cards out of something else? If we abandoned paper and chose a material with a higher specific energy that was still solid enough to make a playing card out of, then we would get even more of a boom. If Gambit switched from paper cards to cards made out of polystyrene, the stuff foam cups are made out of, then he would get cards that were slightly heavier and much more energy dense. Magic. Doing the same math and using the same dimensions for a playing card, and these foam cards using Gambit's powers would explode with three times the energy as paper cards, 120,000 joules. Not bad. Die, Metal Man! Much of human civilization runs on coal, millions of years old, radically compressed and heated dead plant matter that we are currently using so much of, it's making our atmosphere inhospitable for human life. If Gambit fashioned his cards out of something like anthracite coal, he would get even more of a bang magic. With 130,000 joules of big deck energy to work with, Gambit's cards would now be exploding like landmines. And given how terribly effective landmines can be, if Gambit was harnessing this kind of potential from the materials of the cards he was using, then they would definitely be deadly. Die, purple automaton! There is another material that Gambit could use to up the energy one more time, but he'd have to go nuclear. The greatest, densest source of energy is mass itself. From Einstein, we know that mass and energy are equivalent. For example, weigh some TNT before it explodes, and then weigh it, every single piece of it, after it explodes. And you'll find that all those pieces put back together and weighed weigh less than the original sticks of TNT. No, you did not miss any piece. There is literally some mass missing. And that is the equivalent mass that escaped to the universe in the form of energy, heat, and light. So it follows that something that's more massive has more energy. A cup of cold water weighs just slightly less than that exact same cup of hot water. It's weird to think about, but at least it makes more sense than interdimensional portals opening up in your eyes. It's a weird power, Scott. An explosive like TNT is not harnessing the energy of mass itself. Rather, it is releasing the chemical energy bound in its bonds. To get energy directly from mass, you have to go down to the atomic level and either find a way to force two less stable nuclei together into a nucleus that is more stable and therefore less energetic, which releases the energy difference. Or you can find a way to split a large unstable nucleus into two nuclei that are more stable and therefore again, less energetic, which releases the energy difference. Nuclear reactions like these are actually changing atoms into other atoms. They're not just rearranging or breaking bonds like in chemical reactions. And so masses are changing. And although those mass changes are very, very small, when you multiply them by the speed of light squared, a very large value, relatively speaking, the energy you can release from a nuclear reaction is enormous. 
As some of you may have guessed, we just described nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. And these nuclear reactions release at least 100 million times more energy per unit mass than even the most vigorous chemical reaction. Where is my bow staff? Since Gambit's powers are almost entirely unexplained, what if he made his playing cards not out of paper, not out of foam, not out of coal, but uranium-235? And when he charged this card, maybe his hands are perfect neutron reflectors so the uranium would instantly go critical, it would release all the nuclear potential energy like a fission bomb. If Gambit made a standard playing card out of uranium and threw it at your face, it would explode into raw kinetic energy with over four trillion joules of nuclear potential energy. This is equivalent to a one kiloton TNT blast. And just how deadly would that be? Well, here is footage of a one kiloton nuclear test that the US military did in 1955. Now, just imagine if every time when Gambit threw a playing card, it wasn't just some puff of smoke against a metal man's chest, it was that. If Gambit's powers really can harness any potential energy from whatever he is working with, Remy might want to rethink his choice in materials. Stupid tricks, anyway. So, just how deadly are Gambit's famous playing cards? Well, that depends on the powers, how exactly they work, and the material that Remy is using. But if he was harnessing the chemical potential energy from the paper his cards are printed on, they could pack a decent punch and be deadly if applied in the right way, though not quite as deadly as the comics say. Though, if he was clever, he could make up for this energy discrepancy by making them out of a different material. If he fashioned playing cards out of uranium, a single deck of Gambit's cards could level a city. In other words, not taking those cards seriously could be a real Gambit. Because science- Surprise, Bull Staff! <laughs> Uranium is one of the densest materials we have on Earth, and so if Remy was making his playing cards out of uranium, as I suggest, which would be awesome, uh, each card would weigh uh, two ounces? And the entire deck of playing cards would weigh about two and a half kilograms or six pounds. Now, it might be harder to throw a two ounce card, but then it would be closer to a ninja star. And then, it, then they'd be nuclear ninja stars which kind of sounds like one of the lamer names from the late, for the later X-Men. I'm Nuclear Ninja Star. I have confetti for hands. <laughs> what was Jubilee's power? Who cares? Thank you so much for watching, Amy. If you want more of me, you can go to projectalpha.com, where if you sign up now, you can get this show two days earlier than anyone else and other premium content from myself, Nerdist, and Geek and Sundry. Also, follow me and Because Science at these handles here to give me suggestions for future episodes. Sometimes I use them. Bye.